السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علیہ رسول اللہ رب شرح علی صدری و یسلی عمری و احل العقد من لسانی یفقہ قولی سبحان کا لعلم لنا الا ما علمتنا انک انت العلیم الحکیم ربی زدنی علما ربی زدنی علما ربی زدنی علما ربی یسر ولا تواسر و تم بالخیر یا فتح و یا علیم و بکا نستعین Assalamu alaikum once again dear listeners welcome back to connect with the Quran and you're with Najm Ansari here on Hilal TV and uh, I pray it's been a useful journey for you alhamdulillah I'm kind of excited because we have done um, a sort of intro a 101 then we went into surah fatiha very briefly very br- briefly just to introduce Allah what do we commit to and what is coming further um, and what do we? What are we asking for, for guidance in Surah Baqarah? We started, and I just chose snippets of what I found of value. You, you know, it took Umar Farooq radiAllahu anhu. They say eight years to actually ponder deeply into Surah Baqarah. So there, the infinite gems in there, the infinite gems, and and the beauty of it. Inshallah, I will also want to tr- try and do a synopsis of it, of all the uh, things that are touched upon in Surah Baqarah, you'll find at every other point in the Quran. It's like, you know, p- <clears throat> clicking on a link and then you find another link that takes you there or takes you there, depending on what your interest is in. <clears throat> so those, um, so that's what we've done now. We finished with Surah Baqarah. The most beautiful passages at the end was something that was revealed to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the heavens, starting with Aman al Rusulu. That's another beautiful passages. And along the way, we will keep referring to it. But I thought now I'll take another little pause away from the surah and just give you um, a generic, again, an overview of the, uh, of the surahs, and, uh, uh, also of how to try and um, just connect better, you know. So just give you some tools on that. But before that, I'd like to re- read you a poem and uh, of what, is the purpose of guidance, what is it that we are trying to uphold? So the poem goes as such. It says, reach out, live to reach out, to reach out good souls. Reach out for Iman, it's our ultimate goal. The wealth of Iman, being with the Iman-minded, is beyond measure an immense treasure. We, uh, It's a solace for the soul, contentment for the heart, a sense of well-being, the minds agreeing. So reaching out to the like-minded soul gladdens the heart, goodness imparts. Core beliefs in sync, no egos to flinch, no egos flinch, super serenity desiring the same destiny, pleasing the creator, pleased with him, earning entry to external ecstasy. So this was just to kind of say these are kind of things that we in our core being, this is what we love to reach out to. And we always love to be with the like-minded people. And they, and I love this saying, which says that if you are with 40, for 40 days, hopefully consecutively, but even over the, 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 the significance of the number 40 somehow comes up, that if you, if you are in company with somebody for 40 days, their values sort of seep into you and your values into you. So there is sort of like a synchrony a coming together of each other. So um, essentially, Iman is what we hope to keep intact and the guidance that we need to get to the Akhirat ha- going with our Iman intact. And the reason why I brought the Iman factor up here or use this poem to highlight because Surah Baqarah in essence by showcasing those who sort of derailed and from whom the mantle of being the chosen people of the guided people of the carriers of Iman, Tawheed, was taken from them, from the Bani Israel onto the Bani Ismail in the form of our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So with that sort of background, it was, uh, they had Tawheed in the oneness of Allah, but at the Iman level, at the heart level, it was all becoming very rusty, corrupted, and so on. And just because I brought up the rust factor, the antidote of rust is zikrullah, the, the rust of the heart is zikrullah. That's how you polish it, and how you polish it also is by remembering death, by remembering the uh, coming back to the basic tawheed, the risala akhira. If you remember death, if you remember the your last um, 
that this is in transit, then somehow we get back in equilibrium and we know um, how to sort of re, you know, I may be going out nuts for a moment and then I can recollect myself and ground myself into that. So that's where Ima, uh, just the strength of Iman is so essential. And uh, in essence, Surah Baqarah covers a lot of that. So th that is for there. As a synopsis, I'd love to just take you, walk you through of all the things that um, uh, Surah Baqarah um, comes up with and in terms of um, the, the rukus, the first half deals with A, B, and C. And in essence, I don't want to do it as an academic exercise for you to go deep in, but for you to go, because, you know, there is infinite goodness also available on the net. Yes, we worry about the right, the wrong, aqidah, and all of those things, but there's also enough goodness there too. And the way to do it, I love it. I loved the fact that a friend also appreciated that, you know, whenever you go into something, say your tuna fills, renew your I intention. There was a beautiful um, WhatsApp I recently received. I'm not going to read it out, but it was a beautiful one about how, Ya Allah, let the Quran be my my guide, my solace in good times, let me reach out. And this is the beauty of our faith is that whether you are happy or sad, you reach out for the same Allah, you reach out for the same Quran, you reach out for the same Salah. So in pure joy, you see people go in sajda. In pure sorrow, you also find solace in sajda. So those are the, the kind of things that need to be remembered time and again. And talking of sajda, I would like to um, uh, remind you that there are 14 sajdas in the Quran. Again, yes, I can read them out to you. They are here, they're here, they're there. But the, the essence of it is that I am just trying to invite you. All this information is there Open the Qur'an for yourself. Connect for yourself. When you're reading, rote reading, highlight that the first one comes in Surah Araf, the second one comes, uh, and I'm, I don't have them all by heart, but you know, they are there. And so, and then notice why is it that there is a sajda here? The first one comes in the seventh surah, if I'm not mistaken, it's surah Araf towards the end, when you say, you can call him by Allah or by Ar-Rahman and, and so on. And the very last one is in the first surah that was revealed, Iqra So, um, and I'm now just saying it of what I find of value that you do the sajda because the negative guys didn't do such that. But it's also um, sometimes you're so in all oh, like Dawud alayhi salam, he went in sajda as soon as he realized that it was what Allah tested him with, the two men who crossed um, the wall and so on. So there are beautiful moments of when it is. And, and I loved what um, some... Um, Many people have said so, but and I think I've said this before, but how the closest place you are to Allah is in sajda. It's when we as a free willed with a choice being the cr only creation um, within uh, of the one given the choice, well, there's also the jinn, but we are talking about insan now, that with that, the fact that we choose everything does such that everything does does be the birds, the uh, the uh, the universe, the, uh, everything orbiting everything, they're all in thus be in their own fashion, in their own way. The birds chirping and so on, and there's references to that in the Quran. And if that interests you and excites you, then that's what you. Go and look up. I know it took me forever once. Um, we were looking at, uh, I just loved all the Rabbanas, all the duas the prophets made, all the du duas Allah has told us to make. So I would go into that and then I actually collected them. But the time it took in my days to actually just go, flip, you know, flick through the Quran, page the Quran and find all your Rabbanas, the Rabbi Jalni, uh, the Rabbis. And and now you have it all in access on the on the internet. So Alhamdulillah, it's so much easier for you to find. Yes, the chances of derailing are also there, but inshallah, you know, Allah is with our intention. He is with our what we think of him, so he will fulfill that for us. And so it's not difficult to stay on track. And this connecting with the Quran, this this effort is only what I've loved, I wish to share, how I think over the years I came closer to it, so I wish to share it with you. So I want to share it with you now, inshallah, um, another little bit of uh, tricks of the trade, call it, or whatever, is a good tool. And you know, 
we are where we are, but we can all, what is the legacy we wish to leave behind? So we children work with this sort of thing. And, and I'll get into that in the second segment. And inshallah, um, eventually we will also just sort of look, summarize and see how it connects with the next surah, which is Asura Al Imran and so forth. But every now and then it's good to take a kind of pause and holistically see it, because it's not just an academic exercise of knowing, okay, this surah here, that it needs to touch our hearts. It really needs to penetrate our hearts. So with that, I will leave you right now, and we'll take a short a, a break. And But it's all moments to try and reconnect. And why are we here? Why are you bothering to listen to me? Or, you know, and so it is, and really the first recipient of goodness is myself. For me, hopefully what I'm saying is penetrating there and maybe I hopefully can be more aligned and more in the way I should be. So with that, I'm just going to take a break and inshallah after that we will continue uh, on ways to connect with the, uh, with the Quran. So assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back. And you would connect to the, with the Quran. So that's what I'm hoping, hoping, hoping to instill in us all, myself in first place, that to deeply connect with the Quran. And the dua that we have, which I, I love to make, is that, Ya Rab, make the Quran the spring of my heart, the light of my chest, and the banisher of my sadness, and the reliever of my distress. So, I mean, Ya Rabbal Alameen, I pray this is for all of us and may it be a means of guidance. And, you know, inshallah, inshallah, we'll keep coming back on how whatever we read needs to have immediate impact on my life today. Uh, that's why we, I, um, one of the beautiful duas that I love to read is um, on Wal-Kazimin al ghayza the one who, who can restrain their anger. And uh, and Wallahu Yuhibul Muhsinin is how that I am. Uh, ends. This is in Al Imran a little further. But what I'd love to share with you today is this um, beautiful kind of overview. What well, I'd like to think it's beautiful. You know, you need to really know the 114 surahs. They're divided into 30 Jews, uh, seven manzils, all those kind of things. Just off the bat, we know a thousand things off the bat, be it recipes, be it the scores of the of sports, this sport, that sport, they won that year, they won that year. No, can we not know the names of the surahs? And for me, I've just sort of created this little Excel spreadsheet, primarily for children. I don't know about you, but when we grew up, we used to often have... Um, something on the board, uh, on, the, on the wall, as an, and then like we would have the map of the world. Then we would say, where is Uruguay? Where is um, Fiji? Where is um, uh, Poland? And you find it, and then and another game we would play, on one we would have the names of the countries, and on the other we would have the capitals. So it was just a way of creating your awareness. So while we're living in the dunya, and now the world is divided in a map into countries, can we know where are these countries? Do we know all the countries that are in South America? Do I know all the countries that are in Asia? Yes and no. So these were games we used to play. So from that, for for my own children and for other children, I made this little template of with an Excel spreadsheet. We're here. I'm going to read off you from, and hopefully you can see it now on your screen as well. And I divided them five by five because there is a saying that um, I don't know if it's in science or otherwise. But when you see five things, even five pebbles, five anything, your eye grasps it immediately. Whereas as soon as there is a sixth or seventh, you have to start counting. So that's just interesting. Try it out for yourself. It works. But with that in mind, I divided the surahs. I put them in batches of five for ease of reading, for ease of children. And I also sort of color coded them. And so you have in the beginning, you have one, two, three, four, five. And then I went across six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I've got their names, Fatiha, Bakara, Imran, Nisa, Maida. And then it goes on to Anam, Araf, Anfal, Tawr. And Yunus, and I've also done a story to go with them as a separate thing to try and remember. But in the meantime, what I've done is I've got the Arabic spreadsheet like this. Then on the next page, I've got the English spreadsheet. And here, 
I'm trying to use the same color codes, so the green corresponds to the green in the Arabic, the blue with the blue, and so on. And it's done five, 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 and then five underneath across to get the 114 surahs. At the tail end, I've got two asterisks because there are two surahs which have double names. And if I'm not mistaken, it's Surah Fusilat and it's Surah Ghafir. So Ghafir has a double name, and that double name is Mumin, and uh, Fusilat is also known as Hamim. So um, just, you know, these are baseline things which for your own self. So, you know, if you can um, get this on um, laminated, put it up on the wall. But I used to play this game a lot with children and to say, well, where is this surah? So what's the English name of it? What is this? Of course, there might be better names. I've just taken it very simplistically of what the names are, but you can find better names, you know, maybe along the way you say, no, that's not really the correct translation for this or that, for shuara, it's poets, and so on. And here, um, if we go back to the Arabic one, you will see that um, if you look back in the, the Arabic one, you will see that the Yasin is 36, um, Tariq is on 86, and Surah Saf is 61. And then whether the name sounds lovely to you or whatever it is. You know, I, I remember I love Surah Saf because it just has one beautiful ayat, Nasrun min Allahi wa Patun Qareeb. And I found in exam times at university, every time, with the help of Allah, victory is easy. That's all I knew in that. But out of love of that ayah, it's not a long suit. I think it's only 14 ayahs. Out of love of it, at that, you know, university year, going years, I managed to memorize that surah and I loved it. I might have forgotten, God forbid me, if I have, I have to go and renew it. But, you know, along your journey in life, there are different things that resonate for you. So if you can just create a love like we're teaching them, you know, Ringo Ringo Roses, we're teaching them all sorts of things, the dog, the cat, the A, B, C, D in the language, try and have these names be familiar to them. Do you know what Surah Ankabut means? Do you know what Surah Feel means? You know, and already instill in them that kind of love. And the only reason I like showing this or feeling it's something exciting to pass on to your children, to pass on to your children's children, whatever it is. And because it's color coded, it's like... Uh, you know, visual is also something that we need. So this is the the, the way I found that um, I also tend to remember the surahs when I go back. And if I can't remember is f because in the 40s, I get a bit lost on that. But, you know, is it um, Dariyat, Tur, Najam, Qamar, Rahman, or before that, um, the, the, the Fusila, Chuara, Zukhruf, and Dukhan, and Jathia. I wouldn't always remember what Jathia means. So you flip onto the page and then you realize it means kneeling. So uh, already with doing something like this, you get the names familiar. You know what Ankabut is, Namal is, Namal is the ant, Ankabut is the spider, Feel is the elephant. So something begins to sink in. And then, you know, whatever you are comfortable with, you remember, you wish to spend more time with. So these are the kind of connects at a base level, we need to be making to want to, because otherwise, usually what happens, we hear a bayan, we hear something, yeah, very nice, but I didn't catch it, I didn't quite get it, what was it they were talking about? And like somebody, you know, says, oh, I don't know any Arabic, and they sort of proudly say, well, if you don't know Arabic, let's learn to be a little bit, you know, um, mindful or ashamed of it, we, we can know all sorts of things, other things, which are totally about the dunya and irrelevant, and here's something which Allah gave us, Allah, you know, by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, got it from us. So if we connect with whatever our Rasul connected with, won't we be able to more easily follow the sunnah also? So after this, I'd just like to share, this is what I got um, for the basis of the children. Now I want to go on how in another later on, uh, um, on further tafsir studies or something, I did want to see this breakdown of how we did with these surahs. And, um, and there, here I just did it for child, for visual, for getting the names of the surahs. Then I got, we'll see it on up on the screen again now, is that then we got um, the names of the surahs coming up. So with that, we uh, the beauty is that you have surah Fatiha as an entry point, as an, uh, what we started with the beginning. But then we have it divided into, and I don't have that on an Excel spreadsheet, but it's on a 
um, just to divide it of how many surahs come. And that goes as that after the, uh, and I like that, little page also, uh, which I, I is going to come up on your screen now, is I love that because that too um, is a simple one. And it says, after Surah Fatiha, you can take, uh, and, and with the help of that Excel spreadsheet, you'll know the names. But anyway, so you have three, a combination, a grouping, it's grouped into, and it's, it's somebody, a Mufassir did it, so you don't, you know, it's not uh, that you have to know it, but it's it's a beautiful way of wanting to know lampposts in the Qur'an. So they've divided it into um, uh, three surahs first. So after Fatiha, they keep as one on their own. Then they have three surahs as Baqarah, Al-Imran, and Surah Nisa, three in a row together. Then they've got a series of five surahs which go together from Surah Maida up to Surah Tawbah. So you know after Maida comes Anam, after Anam comes Araf, after Araf comes Anfal, and then Surah Tawbah. Then they've got seven surahs grouped together, and they are Surah Yunus up to Surah Nahal. And I don't remember all of them in the in the order. I do love to. And that's the kind of beautiful exercise. Do we know that? Yes, we need to know duas. We need to know ayahs. We need to. But even before that, even if you know the names of the surahs, you will have a greater love for the Quran. You'll want to. I'm saying you because it, it worked for me. And, you know, you just have this tremendous love of wanting to know more because it's infinite. You know, we'd like to think, yes, we've studied the Quran cover to cover. We've done. But there's no end to it. You go into it next time and there's more. So after seven surahs being connected together, next time they've got nine surahs put together from Surah Isra all the way to Surah Furqan. And, and then they've got Surah um, uh, 11 surahs surahs from Surah Shu'ara to Surah Yasin, and then they've got 13 from Surah Safat to Surah Hujrat, and then they've got the whole, let's say, the Makki period of phase of, of the Quran in the last, I think it's in the last uh, three or um, from uh, surah, uh, from Juice 28, or it could even be from Juice 26 or 27, to, from Juice 27 all the way to the end, and it's 65 surahs from Surah Qaf, which is Surah number 50, um, 50 all the way to Surah Nas 114. So these are just kind of the ways which you can, for your own self, have a sense, okay, so I've done now this section, or I've done this. There are other also beautiful ways uh, um, where one surah is um, Makki surah. Uh, sometimes it's a Madani. There's a whole series of Makki surahs, and then you'll have a Madani surah to wrap it up. So it comes as a bouquet, as a sum. Uh, and, and if we start looking at and realizing it in this way, we'll just have a greater, greater love and I want to connect more frequently. And I just like to give it at the level of leaving, you know, it's not, I know something, you don't know something. It's all out there. Go and do it for yourself. And today we all want to be empowered to know for ourselves. Uh, you know, we don't forever want somebody tells me, then I know it. Even if you look at it, whether it's recipes or whether, you know, somebody tells you all your scores in sports, and then you say, wait a minute, I'll just go check it myself. The recipe, you'll hear it, okay, water, this, this, this. And then you say, wait, I've just got it. I'll do it myself. Or I'll just Google a better recipe. Uh, in everything, if somebody tells you about school, what you should be looking at school academics, you should be looking for A, B, and C, then you say, wait a minute, I'll just go and look it for myself. So when we do things like that, why? This is just an exercise of wanting to connect with the Quran. Just please go and do it yourself. If you never listen again, you've got the hang of it. Just have this love for the Quran. That's what I, and together with that love, the second phase is have the love for the Arabic. Try and get yourself to want to know. For me, just knowing the names of the of the, the surah names, Fusilat or Furqan is criteria. It's this distinguisher. Fusilat, I don't always remember. Fusilat, and I'll just go into my thing. And it says, it means um, 40, what is it? Is it 40? It's uh, things made clear. Okay, and um, uh, 42 is constellation, so I go back to look at the Arabic, and I know that 42 is, um, what is constellation? And I'm losing my plot myself, uh, but that is the kind of thing that you work with. Uh, 
and so 41, 42 is Shuara, Zukhruf is, uh, so, so those names, when you can get them coordinated, and double check, there could be an error in this uh, in this Excel spreadsheet. But you know, Azab is a confederate, Sajda is doing the prostration, then you have names and see how many names you have. There is a surah on Surah Maryam, and there isn't a surah named Surah Musa. It happens that his story is concentrated in Surah uh, Taha and Surah, um, uh, and, and another, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's Surah, not Shuara, but um, uh, Qasas. So these are the kind of things that you can be going into and checking for yourself. Uh, um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful exercise. So I think I'll leave it with there and then um, uh, just go back and do another synopsis in a bird's eye view because I think these are also very helpful. I love to share from the Quran, the ayahs and just all of that, but also just some tools to get us going, you know, to either jumpstart our car uh, and just to motivate us. So like I said, you can use any time, but any day is a good day to start. Any day is a good day to start. So don't just be listening to somebody and da 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 while we're busy and that's the end of it. I pray, pray, deeply pray that something can resonate in us. And even in the middle of the night, I don't know what she said, but let me go and check it out for myself. So um, that's what I'd love for us all to be doing and myself and be motivated. And truly, some you know, we are the first recipients of whatever we say that hopefully something sinks in with us. So with that, I will call it a day. And inshallah, till we meet again, uh, it's assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakallah khair for watching and assalamu alaikum. Take care.